We learned from social media a couple of weeks ago that 60-year-old Toronto school principal Richard Bilkstow tragically took his own life on July 13th, 2023. And according to his family, this was due to distress from the fallout of a 2021 diversity training session. According to the Free Press in July, Bilkstow jumped from his 16th floor apartment in Toronto and he left a note, but his relatives did not wish to share the contents. Some of you may already be familiar with the details of this case, but I want to sum it up, offer some thoughts, and include some of the audio recordings of the diversity training session in question that were just made public. So in 2021, Bilkstow attends a diversity training session. There was actually a series of them that the Toronto District School Board spent $61,000 on, where the diversity consultant, Kika Ojo-Thompson, founder and CEO of the Kojo Institute, berated him and deliberately set out to damage his reputation in front of 200 or so of his school administrator colleagues who were in this session with him on Zoom. It is not merely my opinion that Ojo Thompson set out to damage his reputation and make an example of him. This is in the words of the Workers Insurance Board, which found that Ojo Thompson had indeed abused him, bullied him, set out to damage his reputation, and he was given sick leave for this. Now, if you have read about this case of Richard Bilkstow in the news, um, you'll see that it really kind of all stems from one interaction in the diversity training session. And that is when Richard Bilkstow argues that Canada is less racist than the U.S. And then Kika has a really negative reaction. So I'm going to play that audio from the 2021 diversity training session right now. Racism is, 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 we experience this far worse. Uh, here than there. So uh, I know that's going to be a hard one to people wrap their head around, but that's the level of white supremacy. Like, Canada's a bastion of white supremacy and colonialism. And, like, they at least have a fighting posture against at least the monarchy. I just wanted to make a comment about uh, the Canada-U.S. thing, and I have a little bit of a challenge of it. I did my student teaching in the U.S. and, and have spent a lot of time in the U.S. And to say here, honestly, that Canada is not a more just society than the United States is, and we talked about facts and figures. I invite everyone here to, to do some research and you look at things, yeah, absolutely. And look at things like education and look how more you think about a system we have in Ontario where every student is funded equally. You go to the United States, they're funded based on their, their, their tax base, right? I see you're shaking your head, but I, I talk about no, what I'm saying yeah. here is that what I'm saying, why I'm shaking my head, yeah. is that it absolutely matters what community you live in in, in Ontario. That's not what I said. What I said I, was, I'm not arguing what you said. Yeah. What I'm saying yeah. is, because I'm talking about the principle of your point, yeah. it's not about what you said, this is not a court of law. The principle of your point is that that you can base it on, well, they have this tax system, and that's true. What I'm saying to you is that what racialized people experience in this province is that it absolutely matters where you live. So it's not. So the fact of the tax system is not untrue. What you're saying is not untrue. But how it's lived out in Ontario is not as you say. Is all I'm saying is that if that, the Jane and Finch kids are not having the same experience as the Forest Hill kids, they're just not. And 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 and, and that's despite our equal laws. That's so. And that way, it's worse because we have fake uh, equality. If, or in the name of that equality, kids are still experiencing systemic inequities. Systemic inequities. So that's the point. I, I understand when I hear what you're saying, right? However, I think to ignore that fact, right, that we, we talked about here about, you know, capitalism, socialism, we're very happy here. We have a public education system where everyone is funded the same way. It's not like that in the United States. We have a health care system here where everyone has access to health care. It is not the same way in the United States. So to say, sit here and say, all honesty, we're talking about facts and figures and to walk into the classroom tomorrow and say, Canada's just as bad as the United States, I think we're doing an incredible disservice to our learners. Incredible disservice to our learners. And again, yeah, that's why I want to to say that, right? Thank you so much. 
I, what I'm finding interesting is that in the middle of this COVID disaster, where the inequities in this fair and equal healthcare system have been properly shown to all of us. I mean, so it's just so, and so what's fascinating is, and this is why we're in the state place that we're in, is that you think, so we're here to talk about anti-black racism, but you and your whiteness think that you can tell me what's really going on for black people. Like, is that what you're doing? Because like, I think that's what you're doing, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to leave you space to tell me what you're doing right now. Exactly. I just want to make the point. You were talking about the United States, okay. and I just want to do a comparison. And as I said, you talked about facts and figures, and, and, and you know, listening to the facts and figures. And I think if everyone here looks at the facts and figures in all kinds of all kinds of studies, and uh, you'll see, we're a far more just society. So there, you heard the voices of Richard, as well as Kika Ojo Thompson. She's the one who claimed that Canada is a bastion of white supremacy and colonialism. And, you know, she makes all of the other familiar arguments that we've been hearing endlessly for about the past decade now. And by the way, she doesn't just give her training sessions to school boards. She also does them with banks like TD, police boards, the RCMP, companies like H&M, federal government departments, the USA Center for Disease Control, uh, this is all from her website where she lists her past clients. My alma mater, Wilfrid Laurier University, is uh, of course on there. And by the way, I reached out to about 15 of her clients that are listed on her website. And I asked them, do you plan on working with Kika in light of the fact that the Workers Insurance Board found that she abused and set out to damage the reputation of this Toronto school principal who later took his own life? And only the Dufferin Catholic School Board replied to me and said that they haven't worked with her for a while and they have no plans on working with her in the future. Everyone else is too scared to reply, and they're just going to continue with their destructive and venomous DEI sessions, diversity, equity, inclusion sessions. So, as I mentioned, uh, after this 2021 incident, Richard goes on sick leave. He is approved by the Workers' Insurance Board for two months of loss of earnings benefits for chronic mental stress. He then launched a lawsuit against the Toronto District School Board in April 2023 for failing to defend him. And this is a man who had a 24-year career with the TDSB, the Toronto District School Board. He was a school principal for those, you know, over two decades, and he, he was retired, but he uh, was on a contract because they really needed more principals. Of course, after this incident, he was no longer getting contracts because he became unpopular, because that's how it works. Kika Ojo Thompson slash the Kojo Institute released a statement on her website but it's not very notable. She just says she'll cooperate with the province's investigation because Ontario said that they are going to review these allegations. Uh, and then she complains about how the right-wing media exposed her to online vitriol because that is just kind of always what these people default to is, um, yeah, they're getting mean comments online because of right-wingers. I did not know Richard, but I believe that his death should be honored and how to honor it is we mobilize to defund and destroy the racket that the diversity consultants are running once and for all hundreds of thousands of dollars are being funneled to each of these consultants um, who are hateful people they win awards they have prestige they have status even though they offer nothing and actually not only do they offer nothing, they actively make society worse and more divided. People that become diversity consultants, they are talentless and they are just full to the brim of resentment. And so what they want to do with their lives is lecture rooms of mostly white people about how awful they are. Even though for me, it, it really all comes down to the, the fact that no one chooses their skin color. We're just born the way that we are. 
It's already clear that even conservative governments are not going to put an end to these diversity training sessions. In fact, this is all taking place in Ontario, and the Ontario Education Minister, Stephen Lecce, has affirmed his commitment to providing anti-racism training. He said that they are going to do an investigation into the matter, but uh, it looks like ending diversity training is off the table. And mind you, this is a progressive conservative government, and he's calling the work that, the kind of work that Kika Ojo Thompson does, important work. Honestly, I don't know what goes through the heads of people who hire diversity consultants like Kika, uh, because I'm someone who doesn't have white guilt. I was born into a white family with no connections, no businesses, little to no generational wealth, no legacy mindset. And so I've never really felt like I need to be ashamed of being white. I've never really felt the need to claim that I have white privilege um, because the idea of privilege, it, it's all relative. Um, again, I never even asked to be born. I was just put on this planet and I was randomly selected to be a white person. So I'm happy with that outcome that I had no hand in choosing. At this point, we need to say, if you attend these diversity training sessions and you don't push back or you don't defend your colleagues who are pushing back, then you are complicit. And I know that might be hard to hear, but you are complicit. And we know that the shame and humiliation that people experience from these diversity training sessions, sure, but cancel culture more broadly, can destroy people, and it does destroy people. Uh, I recommend Kaylin Ford's story on the issue of cancel culture. She recently released a documentary titled When the Mob Came. I wrote my book, Diversity and Exclusion, Confronting the Campus Free Speech Crisis in 2021, and I explicitly call for a total shutdown of all university diversity and, and equity offices. And I don't limit that to universities. I mean, literally, any diversity and inclusion department anywhere should not exist. They exist to shame people, to enforce ideological conformity, and to suppress free thought. They, as in diversity departments, do not have any positives or redeeming qualities. Richard Bilkstow is not the first man to take his life due to cancel culture factors. Um, we also know of Professor Mike Adams of the University of North Carolina, Willington. With Mike Adams, this really came down to controversial tweets, uh, one of which uh, was during the pandemic times. Don't shut down the universities. Shut down the non-essential majors like women's studies. And then in this other one, he refers to Master Cooper, Massa Cooper, um, what would you call it? Yeah, the state governor. And he's using what I suppose is African-American vernacular English and making references to slavery, which is just apparently so controversial that there was a campaign by the student activist BLM types to fire him. He came to a $500,000 settlement with his university that he would retire early. However, he ended up taking his own life. From what I gather online, um, both Richard Bilkstow, who was 60, and Mike Adams, who was 55, did not have kids or spouses. Richard was openly gay. But, you know, here we had this school principal who advocated for merit in education and standards in education, and we needed him. And he took his own life directly as a result of fallout from this DEI session where he was humiliated by a mean-spirited diversity consultant. And so we need to do our part to get these diversity consultants out of business. There should be zero demand for what they do. Zero demand. So please do everything you can in your capacity to get your company or your organization to not host sessions like that. Let's imagine a scenario where um, your boss tells you or your supervisor tells you that they've hired um, a DEI training consultant. You know, why don't you say something like, 
Hey, you know, I heard that these diversity training sessions can get pretty heated, um, even a little bit toxic. And a school principal recently tragically committed suicide due to the shaming he received in one of those sessions. And I'm not sure I feel comfortable participating in something like that. You know, try saying something like that, right? In conclusion, I don't know if it's completely fair to say that blood is on the hands of Kike Ojo Thompson and the Kojo Institute. It's a little more complex than that. But I have no qualms in saying that diversity consultants are just useless, talentless people who need to go out of business. And I will also say that if you are someone who is critical-minded, you don't buy into this diversity training gender ideology nonsense, then we need you just like we needed Richard Wilkstow, um, who was advocating for merit and standards in education and who was pushing back against people like Kike Ojo Thompson. We need people in every job and profession to be speaking out and pushing back. So even if you feel frustrated or underappreciated, remember that your presence is helpful and necessary to defeat mean-spirited and vengeful people like Kika Ojo Thompson. I'll leave you with this video clip of Kika expressing in her own words that her business tripled after George Floyd died. She is such a girl boss. Uh, and then George Floyd was murdered. And I have to tell you, like, my business tripled easily um, because of what I do, right? Mm -hmm. And 